Escape to Burma is the kind of fuzzy jungle adventure blanket I love to consume. With the benefit of luscious technicolor strong leads and delightful animal photography, it becomes one of my most favoured blankets of this type. The narrative is rather straightforward, some may groan at the extent to which it is. Fundamentally, it is a mainstream Hollywood romance, albeit elevated by the charisma, or at least sheer watchability, of Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Ryan. Although it may be dismissed in some circles as glossy melodrama, I feel as though such hypothetical dismissals would be at least mildly unfair. Are the base plot lines of silent Hollywood classics tolerated or accepted? Typically, the woes of human greed or trite love triangles are welcomed in silent era retrospectives, assuming such cliches are helmed by Stroheim or Murnau at least. Of course, that is all well and good for German expats in silent era Hollywood, but what about those helmed by Canadian expats? Do genuine pioneers get a pass for weak or unsubstantial, uncomplicated narratives? As Griffith's acclaim continues to prove, some silent directors have, well, mostly, gotten away with the vilest, ugliest bigotry by virtue of pioneering how to communicate it. In their lives, time was not kind to silent pioneers, but by the 21st century, silent era film directors have constructed films most unabashedly adored and admired for their pure technique and craftsmanship. This is to say, the narratives have been arguably dismissed, or at least downplayed, in lieu of an emphasis on technical skill. Because after all, audiences did not attend film screenings because they hadn't the time for books, whereas the easiness of home viewing in the 21st century suggested to some now otherwise. But why babble on about the reputations of films from silent era directors and a lack of emphasis on narrative cliches in their contemporary reception? Because we are discussing one. Somewhat. Canadian-American Hollywood pioneer Alan Dwan, founding one of the first motion picture studios in California way back in 1911, lived long enough and survived the onset of, sound, of the sound era to direct films into the 1950s. Escape to Burma was one of his last. Dwan's significance lies not merely with his longevity. Rather specifically, for instance, in 1915, he pioneered the dolly shot, more commonly known as a tracking shot though some might argue for Colin McKenzie's accidental bicycle shot as being a true pioneer. Oh, speaking of D.W. Griffith, some sources appear to credit Dwan for creating the equipment that allowed for the crane shots in Intolerance. This is not something I can outright confirm, but it has, it is repeated. But, but so what is the relevance of any of this for 1955's Escape to Burma? Well, nothing significant, although I thought it might be nice to place basic, partly banal plot synopsis in perspective. Sometimes it is better to look at a story rather than read through it. So when Barbara Stanwyck falls in love with Robert Ryan's Fugitive on the Run, character cliches are not to be criticised, but cradled. An embrace of familiarity, cliché is comfort. Of course, of course, without the extensive and beautiful photography of Asian elephants amusing ape antics and a gorgeous tiger, which appears to have been shot for the production tragically, I would be far less inclined to be defending, or at least embracing, such allegedly tired tropes. Still though, what would a jungle romp be without predictability? A complicated treatise on the human condition? God forbid these modest productions would attempt an adaptation of Joseph Conrad instead of Edgar Rice Burroughs. In all seriousness, like a safe, surefire American Western skirmish, the jungle adventure film, replete with more nature photography than plot, perhaps ideally, in my opinion anyway, operates within graspable yet tantalizing parameters. I mean, I must say, I get phenomenally excited at alter nature footage. Something about cellular grain and illustrating the majesty of fauna, of flora, of rivers and rainforests. I find these things hopelessly heavenly. Hell, I even get giddy when they go down the river and the lady from Shanghai. So, is this meant to be an argument in favour of Escape to Burma? Is this film an unsung classic? Not necessarily, but it perhaps most illustrates, in some way, my subjective reasoning for choosing a film over the novel. Really? I get to see rich Technicolor jungle footage weaved into a familiar escapist Hollywood romance? What a splendid experience.